There are over 59 million people in the UK and over 50 million mobile phones in circulation. You may remember a time without mobile phones, but the next generation won't. The huge demand for a full bar of reception has resulted in the UK being littered with over 35,000 mobile masts. Vote for me. I've had breast cancer, which I believed was caused by a mobile phone mast. Villagers have spent a week blockading the site of a vandalised foam mast. They claim that over the years it's been responsible for a cluster of cancer cases in the area. Mobile phone technology is having an enormous impact on the lives of people all over Britain. Last month brought another inquiry into mobile phone safety, more warnings about possible damage to children, and for the first time, official concerns about mobile masts. We're going to tell you now about a group of villagers in Wishaw near Sutton Coalfield. Eileen O'Connor is one woman who has taken on the mobile phone giants, who she believes caused her cancer. This is her story. Well, well it started after um, I'd been diagnosed with breast cancer and I was wondering what could have caused it. And I'd always been saying to Lynn I wasn't happy about the mast anyway, but mainly the look of the mast. I wasn't really bothered too worried about the health impacts because I didn't really know anything about them. It was when another application came through for another mobile phone industry user to go onto the mast. Uh, I, it was only then that I started to think, well, maybe I should look into this, wonder um, what the impact of that could be, and started looking into a bit of research and was shocked at what I, what I came across. Eileen found renewed faith in her best friend and neighbour, Lynn Inslee, who became Eileen's pillar of strength and support throughout the campaign. Eileen and I started to consider that there was something radically wrong with the area. It, you know, it wasn't just a coincidence. The turning point for me was when she contacted T-Mobile and said, I believe there's something wrong with the mast. Within 24 hours, four people came out to this village to reassure us there's nothing wrong with the mast. That was my, the point when I started to question. So I delved into the research and, and we started to unearth the most horrendous can of worms. Until yesterday morning, you would have seen the mast looming behind me, but police say vandals actually removed the bolts from it, causing it to collapse. On the day it went down, we'd actually been and visited a lawyer to talk about legal action. And the next day, the mast came down. And it, to be honest, it was the best sight I've ever seen seeing the mast line on the ground. That was a shock and it, I didn't realise that it was going to turn out to be another big huge battle which, which it became. We've now got CCTV cameras watching their site and they've got security guards on site 24 hours a day and that's 18 months on. So the battle still hasn't ended but um, we also had a lot of fun and it brought all the village even closer together. Eileen fought to gain attention for her cause. She lobbied her local politicians, including Conservative MP Andrew Mitchell. I don't give many marks to the mobile phone industry. They've got an important job to do. We all use mobiles, and uh, mobile phone masks have to go up. But it is the other side of the coin that the companies themselves should listen to what local communities say and uh, should try not to put these masks in places where the local community don't want them. Eileen also sought the support of Labour politician Dr Robert Pocock. Everybody benefits from mobile phones. I think you know, the numbers of mobile phones in the country is more than the number of people living in the country. People are building their lifestyles around having access to uh, mobile phone communication. I don't think anybody wants to see that technology uh, disappear. But what we do want to have is a transmission technology that's safe. I think the government really... Uh, owes it to the country and owes it to the development of technology to take a stronger lead here and to uh, really put the, uh, the industry under much more pressure. Politics became a tool which Eileen could use to voice her concerns. When Vote For Me came along, she had found the media platform she needed. I've had breast cancer, which I believe was caused by a mobile phone mast. I was brought up to stand up for, to anyone, no matter how big they are. 
I would never put profit before people's health. Well, I just came across this um, article in the paper last year about this political reality TV show, which I'd never dream of entering normally. I was living 100 metres from a mobile phone mast. I am battling to get the plan and laws changed to make sure that health is a consideration when putting up these masks. So I really saw it as an opportunity to go along and to, if I got through, and to try and use it as a platform to get this message over as a single issue over and over again and to try and make people realise how important it is. She really believed in it. It's something that really worries, uh, I think, ordinary people in this country and uh, I think she was tremendous. It's been a fantastic platform in the media and made some great contacts and um, I think it helped to get the message out even further. Now, that's the main priority for me at the moment is to get the message out to the public because they're simply not aware. I think if there were that bad a risk then they wouldn't let so many people buy them. Well obviously I mean at the end of the day if, if, if there's any proof that a mast causes a serious illness then you know everything should be done to eradicate that. But we've got to make sure the public are aware because it's, a, it's the public that are causing the problem. I think something's been embedded into, into me and into my family as we've grown up because we've all been a family who won't stand for, for injustice. Come and face the people you're exposing! I, my mum always brought us up and told us to stand up and fight for yourself no matter how big they are and what I didn't realise at the time was I was going to take on one of the biggest industries on, on the planet. Eileen O'Connor has become a force to be reckoned with rather than just a cancer statistic. It has been a long road for her and her friends and family. So in five years time I'm hoping that we'll have legislation brought in and if, if they haven't there'll be the new election coming up in five years time and I think they'll definitely Yes. Well, if they've done nothing by then, we'll all, we'll all be standing and the, and the mm. campaign will be so much bigger. It's grown tremendously oh, in the incredibly. last four years already, so they better listen. Because mm. if they don't, they won't know what's hitting them. One person can make a difference, and Eileen proves that anyone with conviction in their beliefs can stand up and be counted.